The socialists and their allies, the small Dialogue for Hungary party, gather to watch the election results. Some people arrive with initial optimism. It doesn't last long. As the results are finally announced, it quickly emerges that Viktor Orban has secured another two-thirds majority. In this film, we consider what has enabled Orban to gain such political dominance. There was a disappointment after this in the left. How? Since 1988, has Orban developed a populist authoritarian right-wing message? So Orban saw the opportunity that, that if he moves to the right uh, from the liberal center, then he can target a larger political space. And how he has exploited the weaknesses of modern democracy. And this is tribalism, um, which is rather post-truth phenomenon in the sense that you really want uh, to be, uh, win elections on the base of your tribe. And you don't have to be a loved figure. You don't have to be popular in the classical sense. The premise of Orban's regime, uh, which is ethnic and religious denominational and national, is not doubted and discussed and attacked by anybody. A Fidesz Magyar Polgári Szövetség és a Kereszténydemokrata Néppárt a magyar parlamenti mandátumok 68%-át szerezte meg. Ez világsiker, ez magyar világsiker. Ma forradalom történt a szavazófülkékben. A magyar emberek a mai napon megbuktatták a hatalommal visszaélő oligarchák rendszerét, és helyette megalapítottak egy új rendszert, a nemzeti együttműködés rendszerét. Tens of thousands of people have been fired. But of course, there's no real paper saying that you are being fired because you are sympathetic to the political opposition. You're just fired because of reorganization or whatever, or, you know, a state enterprise being privatized, mass firings, and then re-nationalized. But of course, people are not rehired also at the tops of the public administration, ministries, etc., uh, etc. Et you know, tens of thousands, really. Well, not 40, but, you know, 10, 20,000 experts, civil servants, etc. have been fired. It's public service media has been totally reorganized, where, again, thousands of people have been fired from the university realm, etc. Local government, local administration, there have been e indeed some types of institutions <clears throat> that the government has got rid of altogether because it was deemed to be hopeless for the interest. We don't have an Environment Protection Agency. We're the only European country that doesn't have an Environment Ministry or anything at all. Zero. Ebben 2010 óta ez folyamatos, folyamatosan leépült a munkahogyi ellenőrzés rendszere. Egy példát hadd mondjak, valamikor önálló intézmény volt az a munkahogyi ellenőrzés rendszere, durva 800 ellenőr dolgozott önálló szankcionálási és bírságolási és ellenőrzési jogkörökkel. Ma a kormányhivatalban egy főigazgató helyettes felügyeli ezt a területet, és mindössze 200 munkahogyi ellenőrrel. Tehát gyakorlatilag azok a jogszabályok, amik létrejöttek az elmúlt időszakban, és nagyon munkavalló ellenesek voltak ezek a jogszabályok, még azokat sem tartják be, illetve nem ellenőrzik azoknak a betartását. Ezért egy ilyen 19. század elejé szabad kapitalizmus jött létre ezen a területen. Gyakorlatilag a munkáltatói erőfölénnyel élnek, sok esetben visszaélnek a munkáltatók, és ez mind-mind a munkavállók kárára történik. So even uh, right-side parties have to pursue a socialist economic policy, more or less, because they just can't get votes without this. Uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, 
so this approach must be changed in the society, I think, because it's not healthy. Socialism was a, an artificial thing. Well, this is rubbish. Uh, the, this idea is total, total rubbish. First of all, because uh, Orban's system uh, is not statist at all and is not centralizing. It is a system of chaos. It is a system of destroying public administration uh, in favor of informal rule, uh, rule of informal oligarchies, and refusing the rule-following character of any uh, modern public administration. There's, uh, there's uh, huge housing subsidies for those who can afford to enroll and have at least three children, whereas there's no social housing and the ratio of social housing is decreasing. And there's the housing crisis of the century happening right now in Budapest. In the 30s, in the 1930s, Budapest faced a similar huge expansion of housing crisis and never ever since, and now this is going on. Suspending on unemployment, on uh, disability pensions, early retirement schemes, spending on healthcare and education, they, they did fall significantly. Social policy in general has been redirected to support entirely the upper, upper middle class, or at least the, the middle range of the middle class and upper. So, as we know, it, this is pretty similar to what's been happening from even Western from us, that the welfare is being slowly either demolished bit by bit or just never raised. So thus it's losing its worth and it's being replaced by tax cuts. And we know who tax cuts are favor, favoring. It's those who have official registered income and their income, the higher their income is, the more benefits they get. Most már azt látom, hogy az emberek inkább haraggal fordulnak felénk. Folyamán miért kell 6-8 órát ülni egy sürgőségi osztályon, és miért nem jut időbe megfelelő ellátáshoz? Hát ezért, mert kevesen vagyunk, ugye mindenre várni kell, nyilván egy vizsgálatra várni kell, utána annak az eredményére várni kell, attól függően várni kell egy szakorvosi konzíliumra, hogy jó helyre kerüljön a beteg. A mentő elsőbséget élvez, ha valaki akut életveszélybe kerül menet közbe várakozási idő alatt elsőbségbet élvez, és nyilván a többiek ott ülnek, vagy fekszenek a földön a matracon, ugye ez mindig hír, hogy elégedetlenek az emberek.
but they even uh, subsidize foreign investment uh, more than the previous governments, which is um, a consequence of being unorthodox elsewhere. So the unorthodoxy of uh, uh, the Fidesz government is primarily about um, the lack of a stable legal environment. Down to the smallest and most in insignificant institution, there's no small town cinema manager who is, who, who is not uh, linked to the dominant right, not to the party because there's no such party. Uh, Mr. Orban's party, the Fidesz, doesn't have members, doesn't have activists, it's not a movement, it doesn't have an inner life, it doesn't have meetings, it is a core of apparatchiks and uh, when, for example, in this election campaign now, they have to distribute leaflets, they're hiring people, they're hiring people for money, they don't have activists. So, I think the electoral law itself as a system is not that bad, it is a half proportional, half majority system, uh, everyone has uh, two votes, one for the list, one for a uh, candidate. But there are some specific provisions which are really problematic. Uh, it is, on the one hand, uh, gerrymandering, which is really unjust. And uh, the second is that also the winner candidates can get uh, compensation votes on their party list. It is also really unjust. And uh, the campaigning rules, so the procedural rules, are very controversial too. It is actually created to serve Fidesz, um, like, you know, interests, yeah? So basically it is, it is for them and then we thought that the basis of everything, what we call democracy here in Hungary, is the electoral system. So we, if we can change the electoral system, then we will have the chance to change things yes, because but the, because yeah. the electoral system is not equal for everyone right yes. now végén a kormányzó pártok egyedül alkották és szavazták meg Magyarország új választási rendszerét senki más véleményét nem vették figyelembe hiába volt széleskörű és tömeges tiltakozás az átalakítással szemben a változás hátrányos helyzetbe hozta a Magyarországról elvándoroltakat, a végletekig megnehezíti, sőt sok esetben ellehetetleníti, hogy több százezer polgártársunk szavazni tudjon. Brutális költségvetési csalásokra ad alkalmat a kamu és bizniszpártok számára, akik milliárdokkal károsítják meg a közös kasszát, miközben szándékosan megvezetik a választókat. A világon egyedülálló módon a magyar rendszer a győztes jelöltet adó pártot többet szavazatokhoz juttatja. Így 2014-ben 750 ezer polgártársunk szavazata duplán számított. Ezzel további hat mandátumhoz jutatta a kormányzó pártokat. A jelenlegi választási rendszer az ellenzéki pártokat elveik feladására és kényszerkoalícióra kényszeríti a biztos bejutás érdekében. Ezzel szavazók százezreinek a véleményét hagyja figyelmen kívül. Csak vagyunk a jó Istennek, hogy megengedte, hogy ez is megtörténjen. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! Kellő alázattal és méltósággal, ahogy illik hozzánk, mondjuk ki, minden kételj és bizonytalanság eloszlott, győztünk. The thing is that uh, Orban openly called uh, the Russian Federation as, as one of his regime models back to 2014 in, in this infamous speech on illiberalism. Ezt úgy fogalmazzák meg, hogy versenyfutás annak az államnak a kitalálásáért, amely a leginkább képes egy nemzetet sikeressé tenni. Miután az állam nem más, mint a közösség megszervezésének módja, amely a mi esetünkben hol egybeesik országhatárokkal, hol nem erre majd vissza fogok térni. Talán a meghatározó mozzanat a mai világban úgy fogalmazható meg, hogy versenyfutás zajlik annak a közösségszervezősi módnak, annak az államnak a megtalálásáért, 
amely a leginkább képes egy nemzetet, egy közösséget nemzetközileg versenyképessé tenni. Ezzel magyarázható, tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, hogy ma a sláger téma a gondolkodásban azoknak a rendszereknek a megértése, amelyek nem nyugatiak, nem liberálisok, nem liberális demokráciák, talán még demokráciák sem, és mégis sikeressé tesznek nemzeteket. Ma a sztárok a nemzetközi elemzésekben Szingapur, Kína, India, Oroszország, Törökország. We can clearly see that in some fields uh, Russia serves as a source of inspiration on how to run an illiberal regime. Um, the way how they occupy the media, for example, which is not like less via direct censorship, because it can hit back easily, but more what happened after the Kursk uh, submarine catastrophe in Russia, where Putin could feel on his own skin that the media can be harp harmful, uh, uh, let's say, depicting him as incompetent, indecisive, and, and so on. Then he decided that, okay, there is a time to take over the media. And what happened there is that pro-Kremlin oligarchs uh, bought up media outlets and turned them to uh, Kremlin mouthpieces to different degree and to different taste. But uh, this is what happens, I think, in an even more systemic manner in Hungary. So I think uh, everyone waited that uh, there will be a change and some politics which represents the interests of the nation and so on. But of course the Orban government had uh, similar unashamed corruption cases and even worse, <laughs> maybe. To be frank, in Hungary um, the, the largest criminal actor in Hungary as the government itself, not the mafia, not the private uh, organized cr uh, criminal uh, groups, uh, but the government itself. Lerdin Smészáros is a neighbor of the Orbáns from Felcsút and a gas fitter by trade. He is now the owner of an extensive property, financial and commercial empire. His role as a conduit and back carrier for Viktor Orbán appears to be an open secret. He owns extensive stakes in power stations, banks, media, hospitality and the catering sectors and is now at least the eighth richest man in Hungary. In 2017, he and his family win public tenders worth 1.56 billion euros. Sometimes oligarchs pretty close to the Prime Minister himself are taking over whole sectors where they see a lot of profit. So I, I, I never see it as, as neoliberal or, or neoconservative. There is one important element, of course. It is more for creating a bigger social inequality. So from the public institutions, uh, through advertising companies, to media companies, to holding companies, and again to Shimichka Lodge, because Shimichka, uh, 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 he, um, he put his, uh, uh, his, his people, his strong to the to the public institutions. Lawyer Shimichka is a post-communist oligarch with extensive network of companies, including public works company Kurzgebe, became huge contractors to the government from the late 1990s. As a student in the 80s, he had shared a dormitory with Viktor Orban and was close to Fidesz, but had friends in other parties too. Shimichka's focus on public procurement. In the 2000s, he extended his range of activities to include media companies, newspapers and billboard agencies, so that after Fidesz's election victory in 2010, he vastly extended his wealth, at least for a time. The reasons for Shimichka's argument with Viktor Orban since 2015 aren't entirely clear. Maybe they relate to the use of Lerin Smisaros as a pet oligarch. In any case, Shimichka is currently antagonistic to the regime and has been unlawfully excluded from public tenders. He is perceived to be close to the far-right party Jopik, and has used his media interests against the government in the run-up to the 2018 election. Orbán is not really serving uh, the nation. 
he, it's a narrative that he uses very successfully and he, he can do that partly because others were, were not able to do it very successfully. I mean, the, the left or the liberals in Hungary uh, over the 20 years when they were um, uh, on power or close to power, they will never be able to, you know, to, to speak to the people as a, as a community. This were very technocratic approach and Orban was able to do that. Uh, while beforehand Fidesz's uh, core voters were the uh, rather well-educated uh, middle class and upper middle class families, right now the, uh, the core voters of Fidesz are pensioners uh, who deep in, in their worldview, who are rather uh, yeah, strongly pushed by symbolic messages but it's not the same Fidesz in terms of their voter base than it uh, was before. And uh, the average education level of, of, uh, of Fidesz voters dropped significantly. Külföldi barátommal jöttem el a mai szép március 15-i ünnepségre. Határon kívüli magyarok vagyunk, és úgy éreztük, hogy itt a helyünk minden előtt azért, mert a jelenlegi kormány olyan mértékben törődik a határon kívüli magyarsággal, hogy elkötelezettnek érezzük magunkat ez irányban. Úgy gondolom, hogy meg kell, hogy maradjon ez a vezetés, mert egyébként, egyébként nem nemzetben gondolkodó vezetése lesz a, nem, a országnak, és ennek harmadrendű szerepkör jut abban, illetve hát ő a harmadrendű helyre szerezi, helyezi azt, hogy mi az a nemzet, mi az a haza. And this is tribalism, uh, which is rather post-truth phenomenon in the sense that you really want uh, to be, uh, win elections on the base of your tribe. And you don't have to be a loved figure. You don't have to be popular in the classical sense. You just have to fanatize um, enough voters uh, that who can win an election for you. You don't have to talk to the center anymore. There is no center anymore, practically. Uh, I think in the whole world it disappears, but especially in Hungary, it, it disappears. You have to create a tribe using identity politics. And um, practically the big, big success, and I think the big secret of right-wing uh, populism these days, it's like, it's not about the bread, it's, it's about the circus. And Orban is very good at the circus. So this is the video clip of Viktor Orban visiting an old lady in uh, Cengeshima, in a countryside, a very, very small village. And here comes the prime minister to pay a visit. This is this old mythology of the king going to pay a visit to the common people. Hoppa! Na, hello, Rafik! So this is what this, this clip is about. He goes there and is amused by the swine and the stall. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? A central notion of social demagogy in Hungarian election campaigns is to campaign and actually practically buy up the votes of pensioners. They are neoliberal to the rich, nationalist to the middle classes, very rude social Darwinist to the poor, and maybe they are socialist uh, welfareist to the, to the pensioners. So it is, uh, someone said that this is a postmodern uh, autocracy. I.e. the premise of Orban's regime, uh, which is ethnic 
and religious denominational and national is not doubted and discussed and attacked by anybody. It became legitimate uh, to be uh, to be radical, to be to be anti uh, anti anti uh, uh, sometimes racist. So this is evil guy who, if he could, would turn Hungary into a migrant country, meaning uh, a lot of migrants would be allowed to come into Hungary and into Europe. He wrote an article in 2015 or 16 about migration, uh, expressing his views how Europe should take a, a role in this global problem. He gave some suggestions and since then he, one, changed his mind and two, um, has been the, the scapegoat of uh, government propaganda. These are all opposition leaders, aren't they? The message is that these people, together, in a coalition, would take down the fence, the defense that allegedly prevents all those migrants from coming into Hungary and taking our country. let's say, most of the regimes that have illiberal or authoritarian tendencies, you have a leader who has a more sophisticated language, uh, who is telling rather moderate things, but there are the people, the executives and the ideologues who are do saying the terrible things. Orban is the most radical politician of his own party. Rodmez Övesserhely had this by-election for a mayor because their former mayor died. And uh, there was supposed to be no opponent running or no serious opponent running against uh, the nominee of Janos Lazar, who is a top minister of this government and is a central symbol. We like to call him Minister Mephisto. And if you saw him, you would understand why. Bécs egyik nagy hírű, régi nagy hírű kerületében vagyunk, ahol 20 évvel ezelőtt egyetlen egy bevándorló sem volt. Ma ebben a kerületben már csak fehérek és keresztények, idős nyugdíjasok vannak, mindenki más bevándorló. My name is Peter Mátizai, I live in Hódműző Vásárhely, and since February 25th I am the mayor in that town. And uh, this was a surprise victory for many in Hungary, since Fidesz seemed to be invincible in Hódműző Vásárhely. 700 ezerre nőtt a bevándorlók száma Ausztriában, akiknek nagy része itt él ebben a kerületben, ezen a környéken, Bécs városában. Meglátjuk, hogy ha az ellenzéki pártok beengedik a bevándorlókat, akkor 20 év múlva milyen lesz Budapest. Lehet, hogy ilyen. So, within a couple of days, he posted a video standing in a street in an outside district of Vienna, talking about how dangerous Vienna is because in that given district you can barely see white people. Mi azért dolgozunk, hogy ezt a jelenséget megakadályozzuk. Jelzés értékű, hogy próbáltam egy-két bevándorlótól kérdezni, hogy hogy érzi magát Bécsben, de senki nem tudott válaszolni, mert senki nem beszélt németül. Tehát egyértelmű tapasztalat, hogy ha bejönnek, akkor a városban város születik, és a bevándorlók határozzák meg ennek a közösségnek az életét. The whole, whole situation is so ridiculous that you can read that Lazar is, is not a person who would voice an opinion of the sort had he not been directly ordered to. The whole situation is sort of cheesy. According to Kasmuda, for example, a notable scholar on populism and far-right, he, he has practically become a genuine far-right part, 
the politician who is talking about illiberal visions. He is probably the only politician in the world who used this label, not in a negative but in a positive uh, manner to himself. This decision in their interpretation is about the big uh, global fight between the uh, Christian world and the Muslim world. Itt a sikertelen integrációnak az egyik oka is ebben keresendő. Én azt hiszem, hogy inkább úgy fogalmazok, hogy nem akarnak integrálódni. It's already March, and the 2018 election is set for one month's time. The opposition have spent the last year in disarray. The Socialist Party's original candidate for Prime Minister has withdrawn and cooperation between the opposition parties has largely broken down. But, as the current candidate, Gergely Karachan, assembles his cabinet of experts, there is some optimism. In a recent mayoral by-election in a countryside town, an independent opposition candidate has won a surprise victory. This has given a flicker of hope to the opposition to Viktor Orbán. Az ország egyik legfideszesebb városában csúnyán megbukott a Fidesz néhány héttel ezelőtt. Egy olyan választáson, ahol mindenki a Fidesz győzelmét jósolta. Ezért azt gondolom, hogy bármi megtörténhet. Nekem az a dolgom, hogy készen álljuk arra, hogy ez meg is történik. Nem sok különbség van. Tulajdonképpen csak a politikai oldalról van, olyan, a politikai oldalról van különbség, hogy az egyik azt mondja, hogy piros szekvű, a másik meg azt mondja, hogy narancsárga. Egyébként szinte majdnem ugyanazt tartják, hát a baloldal az elmél, elméletileg, a, a baloldalnak az elméletileg a munkások és a munkásosztályhoz tartozó kötődése, ez már régen nem igaz. Tehát valóságban már valóságban nem, valóságban már nem, már nem a népet és nem a lakosságot szolgálják és védik. Tehát gyakorlatilag a színük a más. Az esélyből valóság lesz akkor, hogyha te kedves változást akaró polgár. Amikor a parlamentben beszélnek, amikor érezhetik azt, hogy a képviselők valóban őket képviselik. Well, maybe I, I want to say that I actually don't think Orban Victor will last very long. So, uh, in spite of the fact that he is so powerful and he has such a robust power after these eight years on, on power, I think he, he and many others usually underestimate uh, the autonomy of, of, of people in general. If economic conditions would worsen, I'd, I'm rather worried that this would um, increase the authoritarian and repressive features of the regime and might even lead to, a, to more direct forms of political repression that they have so far more or less refrained from. After Mr. Orban has done what he has done, uh, in, without exception, in all countries of Europe, it is the extreme right that is at the core of the political dy dynamics. They might be in power, as they are in most countries, sometimes, you know, disguised. Practically, I think Hungary is the only country where, um, where there is a big 
concentrated flow of fake news and conspiracy theories, uh, most of them inspired by Russia uh, and coming from the mainstream media. Only EU country, but this is similar to Russia. Uh, the way the first law on NGOs was pretty much inspired by Russia. This is the logic of the, of the uh, foreign agents. It's like if you receive foreign funding, then you have to have the tag and you have to wear it as a badge of, of uh, dishonor. Uh, also, some ways of how they are dealing with their opponents, um, let's say buying up some people in opposition parties and, and turning the opposition parties to pseudo-opposition parties, this is also a typical Kremlin strategy and so on. Uh, um, Russia is not the only source of inspiration, Turkey for example is an important uh, source of inspiration as well, but Russia is closer to Hungary, there are deeper political ties, there are deeper economic ties, and there is even a secret service influence uh, that Hungary does nothing to counter. Uh, so I, I don't want to say also that, that um, Orban is the puppet of Vladimir Putin, but if we just take a look at the public opinion polls, in the last few four years there was a, uh, an obvious shift to a more pro-Russian, pro-Chinese position by the Fidesz voters. If they are asked the question, who uh, would you, you choose, United States or Russia? If there is a, um, a dilemma in, in which direction to go, more Fidesz voters say today that we have to choose Russia. That this was definitely different even four years ago. This was different eight years ago. And this is a consequence of this uh, image campaign uh, for Russia in the pro-governmental press and the very um, strong anti-Western messages against resonating the, the neo-Asianist uh, uh, worldview uh, in, the, in the governmental media. So it, it, it works. And Orban is not a puppet, but in some cases, like right now the conflict with Ukraine, he, he obviously fulfills the foreign policy goals of Russia. I don't see how you know, misery and extreme hardship, how those in themselves are um, sufficient for, for, for some sort of political change, at least political change for the better. I mean, I think the hard work of organizing and organizing those layers of society that are the most vulnerable cannot be avoided and just expecting that a worsening of the situation for those who are already under extremely difficult conditions, this would spontaneously lead to an ex some sort of social revolt, I mean, uh, I don't really see that. And I mean, more worryingly, if you think about, I mean, what, are there any political organizations in the country that are, that are present in the whole country and that, you know, that they're in contact with several, with different social groups and they have a level of embeddedness and integration. I mean, as far as I know, not really, or if there is, it's your big. So you have some sort of state, some sort of public administration for the middle classes and upwards. But it is not mostly repression for the working class and for the poor as neglect. So, you know, if a penniless person goes to the state hospital, will expire quietly on the corridors without being attended to. And, you know, this is just withdrawing society's normal function, uh, uh, modern society's normal function to look after all citizens. Jó estét kívánok mindenkinek! Jó estét kívánok, tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! Győztünk!
nemzeti imádság. Isten áld meg a magyar. Jó kedvelőség. Whilst Orbán's regime is very different to Kádár's, it represents a return to secrecy, to paranoia, and a reversion to authoritarianism. It is hard to accept many of us may not see a more open, more socially just or democratic Hungary for a good while. But hope, hope scattered by the realities of a very modern, wholly cynical fusion of money and power, lives on.